Yo, 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 welcome to Hard Pass. I am your host, Jacques Slade, and like Paul Pierce, I have a confession to make, but y you know what? You go first, Truth. I have a confession to make. <laughs> Whoa. I just had to go to a bathroom. A number a one or a number I had to go two. to the bathroom. But why did you need a wheelchair to get to the bathroom? It was that I, bad. It was something went down. I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, you were streaking. Okay, hey, uh, injuries. <laughs> it. Injuries. Actually, no. No, I don't have anything to share. That's gross and disrespectful, Paul. We've all had accidents before, Truth, but what we didn't do is stop an NBA Finals game where my Los Angeles Lakers were winning to halt momentum. Oh well, we got you back in 2010. Five rings is greater than one, Paul. <laughs> that, that's true. Let's start with some news that hopefully won't involve any Paul Pierce bathroom breaks. We've got a release date for Giannis's first Nike signature shoe, the Freak One, and it's on July 3rd. It's also the answer to the trivia question, what if a shoe was just literally a swoosh. It would be like if Kanye just made a booty and called it a Yeezy scuba. Oh, wait, he's actually doing that. Never, never mind. The Brooklyn Nets have made a trade that clears out enough cap space for them to sign two marquee free agents, meaning both the Nets and the Knicks are going to look real silly this offseason when Kyrie signs with the Lakers and trades for Anthony Davis. Kawhi joins the Clippers and KD returns to the Warriors because New York is just destined to be miserable for ever. Mellow farewell tour with the Knicks confirmed. <laughs> That's, that would be funny. Uh, starting next week, the network app is going to be holding a raffle for seven super hyped items for seven days, including the Air Jordan 4 car hat collab and some rare cause toys. The catch is if you win, you still have to pay network $100. They're like that uncle who brought you a PS3 for your birthday and still holds it over your head to this day. Now, Wednesday was global running day, or as I like to call it, the day most people realize you probably shouldn't run in the Nike Air Max 720. Don't get me wrong. The 720 is a very cool shoe. I actually love that they look like two lava lamps on my feet, but these are better suited for that workout flex picture for the gym. Hashtag hype beast motivation. Yeah, hashtag. If you're a video game fan, this week is your Super Bowl. Woo! E3, E3 is going down in Los Angeles and it's gaming's biggest show of the year, or at least it used to be. Imagine if Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour and every other shoe brand got together and had a mega convention once a year to announce their latest kicks for the coming year. Like, what if we had a big stage show where LeBron, Kevin, Kyrie, Paul George, they all introduced their signature shoes. That's what E3 was like in its prime, but with streaming, packs, and Fortnite changing gaming culture, E3 as a show has become less relevant than it has ever been, evident by Sony not even bothering to show up this year. However, the E3 hype train has grown exponentially, with companies like EA opting instead to hold adjacent events outside of the convention center where they can grab the spotlight for themselves. Speaking of the spotlight, Nintendo and Microsoft will have a big chunk of it with Sony out of the way, and we can't wait to see what they have in store for us separately and possibly together. What? Yeah. Here are three crazy, but really not crazy, based in reality, probably accurate predictions that we have for E3 2019. Number one. EA Sports will bring back EA Sports big. Okay, by the time you watch this, EA will already have had their EA Play live stream in Hollywood, but my hope is that they finally do the right thing and bring back their extreme sports division, which includes SSX, NBA Street, NFL Street, and Def Jam Fight for New York. Because why not? Imagine Steph doing a left no right off the heezy leading into an exorcist shot. I mean, he's kind of doing that right now in the finals, but in the game at the Rutgers against the Legends? That would be sweet. Number two, Sneaker drops an E3 exclusive sneaker. Remember last year, when the latest PlayStation Air Force One was teased in the Drew League a few days before E3, and then it actually dropped on sneakers on the first day of the show? I'm guessing Nike has something planned again this year. You know what? I'm gonna think outside the box this time. So my guess is it's Nintendo and Jordan brand, so we finally get an Air Jordan Super Mario collab and determine who the real Jumpman is. Number three, Shigeru Miyamoto shows up at Microsoft's press conference. No, Microsoft hasn't bought Nintendo, and I doubt they could even if they tried, but with Nintendo being a chaotic neutral in the console battle between Xbox and PlayStation, they seem eager to team up with a company that has a rich online infrastructure and will expand their library with games like Minecraft and Cuphead. It's like Michael Jordan jumping over to Adidas level kind of crazy. That would be crazy. Those are my crazy predictions for E3 this year. Let me know in the comments what you think and what new games you're looking forward to playing. <laughs> And now for our top story. So last week, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge opened in Disneyland, the culmination of decades of hard work, dedication, and corporate synergy. Fun fact, I happened to be at Disneyland during the day of the opening ceremony, but the only celebrity I saw was Chris Paul walking to Galaxy's Edge. Sure, everybody was excited to see CP3, but for me, seeing Chris is like seeing your cousin every few weeks, like, hey, it's you again. Now, I didn't expect to get an invite to Galaxy's Edge or anything like that because, hey, I'm a sneaker unboxing guy, and 
Star Wars doesn't pop up in the mailbox that often. But what if I was a Star Wars guy? What if Slajja Cousteau was actually my Star Wars name and this was a Star Wars focused channel with a million subscribers? What if I talked about Star Wars with the same passion that I do for sneakers? Would that loyalty get me anywhere? Like say an invite to the premiere of Galaxy's Edge? That would be cool, but if I had to get in line like every other Padawan, it wouldn't change how I covered Star Wars or Galaxy's Edge and I certainly wouldn't be butthurt about it like this guy. We're not talking about Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Not talking about it. I go, you know what I'm gonna talk about Galaxy's Edge? In two years when I go. Yeah. Because am I a little butthurt? No, I'm a lot butthurt. Yeah. I think that we, Jedi Council, has been the, one of the leading Star Wars voices for the last five years. Jedi Council was not invited at all. So reached out, said, hey, we, we really would like to promote it, we'd like to talk about it. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go as a fan and I'm gonna enjoy it and I wanna go, but I'm not gonna promote it anymore. I'm you... not gonna talk about it. Yeah. Because there's another reason. I don't wanna report on other people's reports. I don't wanna say like, well, Jermaine Lucier who goes to and everything he get he 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 reported on this so but i'm going to go off his report if no, you had no been thanks. invited wow Show us more of your privilege there, buddy. Assuming that you're entitled to anything or that they owe you a pass just because your job is to buy the merch, watch the movies, and defend Greedo shooting first. Hot shot first. <laughs> that's not healthy because it opens you up to disappointment when you realize while these companies might appreciate you, they don't actually need you. And I think that's the lesson sneakerheads have started to learn lately. Like, remember when you used to see hashtags like, Hashtag Nike gang or hashtag boost boys on Twitter that clearly showed off which brand or what sneaker they pledged their loyalty to. The sneaker brand wars were a real thing, man. And I know plenty of people who only buy Nike and our Jordans because they feel that Adidas is inferior. And I also know sneakerheads who aren't named John Wexler who have closets full of boost sneakers and are all about the three stripe lifestyle. Rocking a brand exclusively became a part of their identity and it led to some really heated arguments online. Yep, most of the vitriol came in the form of comments and replies whenever a brand had a moment, like when Derrick Rose tore his ACL the first time or when Zion Williamson's PG2s decided to explode on national television. But there's been a shift in the reaction through the years. When Rose went down, Adidas was getting dragged through the mud for making products that were supposedly unsafe for anybody. It was brutal to watch the slander unfold on Twitter over something that neither Rose nor Adidas could control. But contrast that with Zion's issue with the Nike PG2? Yeah, there were trolls that were clamoring for Zion to forget Nike and sign with Adidas once he goes pro, but it was nowhere on the level of what happened to Rose. It's because we've slowly come to the realization that while it's cool to have some sort of loyalty to a brand for the products they make, there's now less and less reason and space to be a total stand. Studies are showing that millennials are less brand loyal than previous generation, which means that they are weaving through the nonsense hashtags and wearing Vans old school as a result. Now, some cynical old sneakerheads might say it's because people are just following where the hype is. I choose not to take that path. We should never expect a brand to do us any favors other than making good product. That's why influencers aren't scared anymore to call out Nike when they botch a release or when Kanye claims Yeezy's for everybody and then the Adidas CEO says, not so fast, buddy. In this one highly specific case, sneaker culture is actually growing up and I can applaud that about ourselves. So let's give ourselves a hand, y'all. Way not to be loyal to a brand. Just don't let me catch you wearing Jordan Retro with an Adidas tracksuit. That will always be weird, but you know, hey, do you. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of brand loyalty and how it's changed throughout the year. Now, this week's hard pass, where we take a look at something in the culture that just needs to go, like rich and title co-owners of the Warriors pushing Kyle Lowry after he tried to save a loose ball. This is what Kyle Lowry was talking about, that he was pushing. You see there that guy with the left arm pushing him. The Be thankful this was an NBA Finals where there's too much at stake and Kyle wasn't Ron Artest, you know, my guy. Anyways, this week's hard pass goes to an episode of sneaker drama on social media that did not involve a failed sneaker drop for once, but it did involve something that dropped on sneakers. For months now, we've been eagerly awaiting the launch of Japanese fashion brand Sakai's collaboration with Nike Sportswear, a mashup of four iconic silhouettes into two brand new kicks, the multi-layered Nike LD Waffle and Blazer Mid. Each pair has double of everything from tongues to labels to laces to swooshes. While both pairs are highly sought after by the sneaker community, it's the LD Waffle that has become the breakout hit. The sneaker inception concept kind of feels like a lazy gimmick at first, but there's actually some nuance and care in the design, 
in colorways so they feel classic yet forward thinking at the same time. With so much hype behind the LD waffle, you knew it was only a matter of time before somebody took advantage of all that attention for the sake of trolling and we got it in the form of a kid cutting off the elongated midsole on the sneaker with a pair of scissors that you would usually use in third grade art class. It was painful to watch and the response was about what you'd expect with everybody piling on the kid and accusing them of only doing it for the clout. And while that might be true to a certain extent, this is not like our favorite recurring hype beast punching bag cool guy who dips his Yeezys in liquid nitrogen to quote unquote kill the hype. You can make the argument that while the protruding midsole looks cool when you're staring at it on a picture on Instagram, it's a pain in the ass to walk in, especially if you take the stairs a bunch. Instead of just repacking the shoe and selling it on eBay as VVVVVVNDS, they took the initiative to make them usable. It's no different than somebody who buys Air Jordan baseball cleats and does a sole swap so they can walk around without having to sound like Iron Man with every step. Could they have done without the clickbait nature of just cutting the back so it looks like a dog's chew toy? Sure. I personally would appreciate it if somebody had a pair of LD waffles and made a detailed video of how they cut the midsole so that it curves naturally to the shoe. Maybe if Nike were to send us a pair to experiment like when Seve Ballesteros had to improvise and cut out the logos on his Nike golf shirts so we can put them on his visor. Yeah, Sakai made double logos cool, but Seve got there first. Real ones, no. Let me know in the comments what you think about the LD waffle and if cutting the midsole is a cardinal sneaker sin or a smart idea. Okay. That's going to do it for the show today. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching Hard Pass. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel so you know when the next episode is dropping. Thanks for all your feedback because it's you, the Hard Pass viewer, that's making this show better every week. All right, we're out for now, but I wish someday to be as cool as Mo Salah because one of his fans has a parrot who sings his song. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. We're keeping that. We're keeping that. Yeah, keeping that. Mo <whistles> Salah. Oh, Salah, running down the wind. Salah, la, 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 the Egyptian king.